So now that the Formula 1 season is finished for another year, I guess we can get back into what we always do in the off season. Namely, sit in the corner whilst we wait for March to arrive, and complain about all the pay drivers that invariably make up the grid. Next year we'll have a new one, but some of you may not know too much about him. So I'm here today to talk about Canada's newest Formula 1 driver. So if you're unfamiliar with the situation surrounding the whole thing, here's the skinny. Formula 1 is an expensive sport to partake in, and as a result, around about half the teams on the grid require an extra injection of cash to keep the team going. I mean, outside of the development and running of the two team cars, you also have the staff, the travel costs, catering, setup, and so on that needs to be paid and accounted for. The cost of all this amounts to around about 100 million pounds per year, and as a result, some of the teams require a little bit extra to keep them going, which means turning to the drivers coming in and their respective sponsors. It also explains why the best drivers in the world aren't always on the Formula 1 grid. There are drivers such as Roy Nassani and Tatiana Calderon who do not have a good track record, yet are testing Formula 1 machinery based on the size of their respective checkbooks. One of those teams prostituting themselves at the moment is the Williams Formula 1 team. Now, back in the 80s and 90s, you would not imagine these guys giving in to the almighty dollar. Back then, they hired the best available. But the decline in competitiveness in recent years has also been marked with an increased reliance on pay drivers. Even for a driver like Robert Kubica, it it was ultimately his sponsor that forked out 14 million pounds to be able to race for the entire season. But his spot on the 2020 grid was annulled due to somewhat lackluster performance, or perhaps more realistically, he was outbid for the seat at Williams. There were rumours of Williams trying to entice the likes of Nico Hulkenberg and Esteban Ocon to race for the team, but neither of these came to fruition. Instead, the second seat on the team was given to Nicholas Latifi, in what was the worst kept secret in Formula 1 at the time. So, who is Nicholas Latifi, and why the hell is in Formula 1. Well, to put it bluntly, money. There is no way that the issue of money can be looked over in this case. We talked about how Kubica bought in 14 million pounds worth of sponsorship money to the team. Well, Latifi is bringing in 30 million pounds for that seat. That sum of money is beyond what any of us could ever imagine seeing in our lifetimes. And naturally, this news invoked a little bit of resentment among the Formula 1 fan base. Because, after all, Formula 1 fans weren't really too over the moon over the latest Canadian that came in with a lot of funds behind him. But is this really warranted? Is this guy really just a case? of all money no talent? Well, let's look back at his junior Formula career because why not? I had the opportunity to watch him race down here in New Zealand whilst he was competing in the Toyota Racing Series in 2013. And he was, uh, well, it was a little bit shit. He was the worst placed driver in all of his teammates. But hey, early days. He would compete in Formula 3 from 2012 to 2014, when he would get his first taste of Formula 2 machinery. But he would sporadically compete in the championship before finally getting the full-time role with Dams in 2016. He would remain with Dams for the duration of his time in Formula 2, which really is a key component of his progression in the championship. Now, up until the 2017 season, Latifi only had one win in his entire car racing career, which came at Vallelunga in the Italian Formula 3 Championship in 2012. So it was a long time between drinks, but it's it's not too bad. But hey, I mean, look, if we want to talk about bad drivers, I could bring in drivers such as Shiban Siddiqui and Mahavir Ragunathan. It's not a racial thing. Those guys drove like a slug on salt. Hey, I said no salt! But his 2017 season would be fruitful with nine podiums, four fastest laps, and a race win at Silverstone. Finishing fifth in the standings, it was pretty understandable to look at it as a relatively successful year, although he was outperformed by teammate Oliver Rowland throughout the year. The 2018 season was a lot less successful. Even after winning at Spa-Francorchamps, it would be a ninth place finish for him in the standings whilst teammate Alexander Albon finished in third. Perhaps this was just a bad year, or Albon was perhaps that much better than Latifi. Heading into the 2019 season, Latifi was looking to prove that that couldn't be right. Latifi started off the year brilliantly with three wins from five races, and was leading the championship for a fair way. But ultimately, the rounds in Monaco and Monza hurt his championship chase and had to settle for second place. But he was ahead of his teammate Sujo Setekamara, and hey, second place in Formula 2 isn't too shabby. But if you were to look at his entire junior Formula career and put it into perspective, his prospects for Formula 1 looked somewhat limited. The Williams team remarked about how they were impressed with Latifi's feedback and integration within the team, but to be honest, they'll say that about just about anybody. Driving coach Ross Bentley stated that Mahav Vera Gunathan had speed, for example, and we all know how that went. <laughs> 
Those in the know don't believe he will have the pace to match George Russell, which is already a red flag. Ideally, you want the best drivers on the grid, and to say that you're not hiring the driver based on merit, that throws the argument that it was not about money completely out the window. But what the extra injection of cash does mean for the Williams team is that they will now have the resources to take their team off the back row of the grid, so long as the right people are navigating that area. And if Latifi's feedback is as good as they claim it is, and I mean, he isn't exactly a terrible driver after all, this could spell great things for Williams. Now, do I think Latifi will set the Formula 1 grid alight? No. Could I be wrong? Yes. Should we all give this guy a chance to prove what he may just be capable of? Absolutely.